Hi everybody, this is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report, day three of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. I just wanted to do this report to let folks know that there are some things that Democrats just aren't talking about, one of them being the protests happening outside of the convention. Uh, there are groups that are very upset about the treatment of Palestinians in Gaza and the human rights atrocities taking place there. So there have been protests against the United States' policy towards Israel and Palestine. And there are major uh, protests that have taken place all over the country and major encampments at universities and colleges, uh, including here in Seattle at the University of Washington. And you can check out those videos I did earlier this year, my interviews with the protesters during that encampment. Uh, and they were able to actually get the university to make some uh, concessions and the protesters ended up um, calling that a success here in Seattle. But uh, it's a major issue in the Democratic Party and here at the Democratic National Convention where police have been clashing with protesters. And of course, both sides are blaming each other for any violence that takes place. It's not quite the massive police riots that took place in 1968 under Mayor Daley, but, uh, you know, but it's some serious protests and there are some serious issues in the Democratic Party and some serious disagreements and fragmentation and division over this issue of how to deal with the war on Gaza. Um, so if, uh, as the protesters are saying, if Kamala Harris uh, wants to get their vote, she's going to have to uh, secure a ceasefire, okay, and release of hostages and all of that. So, and probably some defunding of the war there by using U.S. weapons and money. So, okay, this is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle. I want to tell you once again to click the button down there uh, on the like button, share with your friends, subscribe if you hadn't or haven't already for my ad-free videos, and uh, watch for an upcoming episode where I interview the hydroplane uh, teams and race drivers in Seattle during the Seafair Cup. Uh, which involved a little bit of competitive controversy there. And in fact, one of the teams refused to even participate in the awards ceremony. So I'll explain to you what happened there. It was a very historic moment in Seattle, but the Seafair Cup races in Seattle are huge. The hydroplane races here on Lake Washington, very popular. They've been popular for over 50 years. Uh, this is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle for the MTC Report. And what you follows are some of the things that the Democrats are not talking about during the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. I will say one thing. People forget a lot of Trump's voters today were Clinton voters mm, in the 90s. Exactly. Okay. And I do think he still has some ability to talk to those voters. Chuck, Amisha, great to see you both. We'll be talking again throughout the night. Really appreciate you being here. I want to get now to what's happening outside the United Center, some of those protests outside the convention. want to show you the scene just within the last minute or two here. Pro-Palestinian protesters, these demonstrators who are marching. That's after a demonstration last night outside the Israeli consulate, which saw a clash, essentially, between demonstrators and police. Dozens of people were detained. NBC's Maggie Vespa has been out there. You've been watching her here on our show in the thick of it. She is back out there today. Give us a sense of what it's like, Maggie, and what the expectations are tonight as we are just about one hour away from things getting officially started on the stage behind me. Yeah, for sure, Hallie. So I'll tell you, today is far more, I guess you could say, family friendly than where we were last night. We're at Union Park. This is where the protests on Monday started when thousands marched toward the DNC. If we could lift up, actually, Jed, and show the crowd size. I put it at a couple thousand here today. This is the Chicago Coalition for Justice in Palestine. Uh, planning once again to march to the United Center within a couple of blocks of it. And they know, obviously everyone does, Vice President Harris is set to speak tomorrow. We asked an organizer what people here want to hear from her. Here's what he said. What we need to hear from her is arms embargo. You must stop the genocide now. If she wants to do something that might be able to win people's votes back that might be able to say to the Palestinians, hey, listen, maybe she could be different than Biden and all the other presidents in the past is if she says something like that.
And we've heard that throughout the week from protesters, Tally. That's nothing new. They really believe that if they don't hear messages like that from the VP and from Democrats, they will lose a lot of votes come November. What about overnight? What we saw from the expectation of the rally, uh, the demonstration, I should say, that you and I talked about 24 hours ago, uh, dozens of people, right, detained. Um, what happened? Yeah, I mean, to call it a demonstration, I think, is, is uh, I mean, we just have to show the video, frankly. It was by far the most chaotic event, the most chaotic display that we've seen here in Chicago. You say dozens detained, they just put it at 56, according to Chicago police. Uh, the vast majority of them cited for things uh, like disturbing the peace and evading arrest. Uh, close to nine of them were cited with misdemeanors. But this is really interesting. The chief of police also said half of those detained, close to it, were from out of town. We saw throughout the night, Chicago police, multiple confrontations, protesters seeming to clash with them on purpose. And then here's what the superintendent says was basically their strategy to get it under control. Take a listen to this. We declared a mass arrest after our officers were physically confronted and attacked. We were not the initiators of violence. Out of that, we had between 55 and 60 arrests. Now, the group behind that is called Behind Enemy Lines, and they had posted online ahead of time that they wanted to clash with police. They're a leftist group with militant leanings, and they posted on Instagram actually last night after everything kind of calmed down. They said, quote, jail support needed dozens of people, in their words, brutally arrested tonight outside the Israeli consulate, which is where this all started, uh, and then blaming the mayor of Chicago's, quote, thugs. So, Hallie, uh, yeah, it definitely escalated last night. Uh, it was violent. It was chaotic. We had a lot of clashes between those demonstrators and police, which kind of was as expected, as you can see, stark contrast to today. Yeah. Maggie Vespa live for us outside in Chicago here. Thank you very much. Coming up, we are just now one hour away exactly from the kickoff to night three. And we'll bring in a former Democratic governor from a state that's been blue, looking a little more purple for a preview of what he thinks we can expect when somebody very close to him speaks later on. And that's, of course, former President Bill Clinton. We'll be right back live from the DNC. Our special coverage from Chicago continues right here on NBC News Now. Welcome back to our live coverage here of night two of the DNC. And outside this building, you've got the Chicago Police Department, we're learning, bolstering those barriers. You see them there, that security fencing that's happening along the pre-approved protest route. That's after demonstrators tore down part of that fence and spilled out into the street there. We saw multiple arrests from that. Tonight's protest, the planned demonstration, is set to look slightly different, set to be in front of the Israeli consulate. The group behind it? is called Behind Enemy Lines, operating under the slogan, Make It Great Like 68. That's a callback, of course, to those 1968 DNC protests against the Vietnam War, which turned into violent riots throughout the city of Chicago. NBC's Maggie Vespa is joining us now with more. So talk to us, Maggie, about what the expectation is for tonight and some of the fallout from last night as well. We were live with you as that was all happening uh, right here uh, in Chicago. Yeah, for sure, Hallie. So we'll start with tonight. You can see, obviously, the police presence is already growing here in the city. We're just across the street from the Israeli consulate. And to that end, let me walk you over here to this corner. Excuse me, ma'am. And we're going to show you, you can see scaffolding and fencing already kind of lined up in front of the consulate. I mean, for, for reference. This isn't starting for a few hours here, so we expect the crowds to kind of fill this area and we expect it to be a large turnout. Right now, from what we're hearing from our law enforcement sources and our analysts at NBC News, we're not anticipating a footprint like what we saw last night. It was about 6,000 people filling the streets of Chicago last night. But you point to the group behind enemy lines. This is a much more confrontational group. This is a group that is often anti-police, anti-authority, and they are really expected to be a lot more confrontational. And you said just the name of the of the event itself, make it great like 68, obviously reflecting back to the anti-Vietnam War protests of 68 has a lot of people on edge, especially after what we saw last night, Hallie. Uh, the chief, uh, the superintendent, excuse me, of Chicago PD talking about this earlier. Here's what he had to say. You never know what to expect uh, from a group uh, uh, like that. Uh, but what I can tell you is what I expect from our side. We're going to stay focused, stay focused on First Amendment protection, but we're also going to make sure that we protect everyone in this city. 
So Chicago police again turning out here. And just a reminder, Chicago PD has 17 other law enforcement agencies from across Illinois and from Wisconsin here in town helping them with the DNC, along with, the governor says, the National Guard. But those other agencies, uh, the city says, are guarding facilities, they're guarding buildings and sites. Yeah. CPD is the only agency out here. City officers are out here dealing with the protests mm. and getting ready for another night, Allie. Maggie Vespa live for us there outside here in Chicago. Maggie, thank you. Coming up, we're getting into what the so-called Harris Coalition could look like and how that might look different from the coalition's President Biden or former President Obama bill. we got a lot more to get to coming up, including some guests you won't want to miss right here as our special coverage continues.